Hello, friends. Hope that you are starting out your Mondays doing very well wherever you are, whatever time this is. I wanted to start another weekly reading vlog today so that I don't wait until the end of next week and have to do what I did last week. Anyways, I'm going to roll some previous footage from this morning. This is my random week where I have Monday off and work Friday, which I Really, really don't like, but let's only focus on the positives here. So this morning, um, yeah, I did my cardio thing. I did my gym thing. I filmed two videos. Today I filmed Sort My Goodreads TBR with me and uh, specific book recommendations. So those went well. And now I just need to do a whole bunch of housekeeping stuff, some YouTube stuff, some editing stuff, some plant stuff, and hopefully make time to see my sister and nephews. Yeah, so a lot to get done and not a lot of time to do it, um, but it's sunny and it's warm in Michigan here today and what more could you need in life? Uh, there's so much to be thankful for when the sun is shining. So yeah, let's get right into this video. Good morning. Okay guys, so this is the week that I have Monday off because I work Friday. And if you can't tell, it is, well, it's laundry day, <laughs> but it's a beautiful, freaking gorgeous, sunny day. If you already saw the clip of the little deer, um, perfect way to wake up, six o'clock and sheets are everywhere, but let's hit the gym. I'm getting gas right now, so I thought I could update for just a second, but I'm like right by a very busy road. <laughs> near my gym and so um there's just lines of cars people driving by but you know that's okay so i have been listening to a ton more of wind up bird chronicle by haruki mirakami um lots and lots and lots and lots more thoughts about the weird explicit sexual content and sexist misogynistic attitudes towards women that you know i love so much so i'm not sure mirakami is actually going to be an author for me after all I'm really, really changing my thoughts about him. And it's a complicated issue. It's complicated. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a busy day today. Got my cardio done. Got my gym workout done. I'm going to go home and film two videos. It's weird. I hate when my Monday and Friday are flipped. Um, but I'm going to try to see my nephews today. I'm going to try to get some plants repotted. Just a lot of stuff around the house that needs to be done. But also, like, your girl is dying to get outside sit outside and get a tan um you can't tell at all right now but i got my first tiniest little sunburn yesterday which you know is not good however i'm happy that it's sunny enough to do so tomorrow i have a Jaden concert with my friend so hopefully i'll be able to put a little footage in of that i love Jaden, and um gas is too expensive i know that you guys would agree what else what else oh i'll update you guys about pure color by sheila hetty when i get home because lots of mixed feelings there too yo Okay, I gotta update all this before I edit really quick. Pure Color by Sheila Hetty is a flat out absolutely no for me. It didn't work at all. I thought it was gonna be promising in the beginning with the way you can see my sunburn now with some of the themes. Basically, this book is, I like nonsense. This book is nonsense. It is following Mira's life from start to finish. That is true. Part of this book is entirely focused upon the grief of her father dying and him ejaculating his soul into herself. And then another part is entirely about religion and God needing to create draft two of the universe. And we're all strong because we're making it through draft one and everything sucks. And how could we possibly live in a universe like this? God messed it up and needs to start over again. I love religious commentary this just didn't work at all for me i don't think there was anything about this that was uh, i don't know like there's i tabbed a lot like there were quotes on pages i liked but the other part is the separation of um okay there's there's three types there are god god appears splits and manifests as three critics in the sky a large bird who critiques from above a large fish who critiques from the middle and a large bear who critiques while cradling creation in its arms people born from the bird egg are interested in beauty order harmony and meeting and meaning they look at nature from on high in an abstracted way and consider the world as if from a distance these people are like birds soaring 
flighty, fragile, and strong. People born from a fish egg appear in a flotation of jelly, and this jelly contains hundreds of thousands of eggs, where the most important thing is not any individual egg, but the condition of many. And a person born from bear egg is like a child holding on to their very best doll. Bears do not have a pragmatic way of thinking in which their favorites can be sacrificed for some higher end. They are deeply consumed with, consumed with their own. Bears claim a few people to love and protect and feel untroubled by their choice. And so that's like the other part of it, the other part of like the conversation here. Like I said, I love conversation on religion. I do not like the conversation that this had about gods and God, and it was just kind of all over the place, and I don't like what it had to say about the universe being created and recreated. I thought the stuff with her dad being like part of her or like wishing that she married him type of thing. Like I thought the whole relationship with her dad was so weird. I thought her observations when she turned into a leaf, yes, a leaf, were like, just not even like, they didn't even make sense. And I like weird, unexplained things. Like I like the weirdest of weird. I like things that don't make any sense. So I should love this, but I'm kind of mad I spent full price on this. And I hope that I can save you from doing the same. That's my very real, raw, honest opinion. And I'm sad because this is one of my most anticipated releases based on the synopsis for it. I thought it was going to be so cool and it just really, 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 really wasn't. So, I mean, I don't even have anything else to say. I suppose there was a couple like quotes I really liked, but I mean, you can find a quote or two you like in any book. She basically just said, she's complaining about her sock and she was like, why was she here? Why did she exist to complain to the creator about socks? Why had God not destroyed this draft and started a new one already? What was he waiting to hear? I just didn't like the whole like creator aspect of this book, I guess. I didn't like the way that it was talked so matter of factly about. So yeah, I mean, I really didn't get much of anything about out of this book and I'm really glad that it's done. I can't wait to pick up something next. I might throw my whole TBR to the wayside this month since I'm sort of already doing that anyways. And I just, I'm gonna go in my room over there in my library and see what's calling to me from the shelves and go with my gut because I can't read another book like this right now. Okay, you guys, I just have to quickly say, I took a pause from all of my work today to come outside and get some sunshine and read um, because it's beautiful here today. And the book I decided to go with is A Certain Hunger by Chelsea Summers. And I'm freaking obsessed. The first chapter was questionable because it talks about very specific details of a drink, Corpse Reviver number two. And it was talking about like hotels and stuff like that. Um, but it is just the type of pretentious book that I enjoy and some of the quotes so far have been so good. Let me see if I can find one. Okay, this one, yes. I learned to approximate a female, how to talk, how to walk, how to dance, how to flip your hair, how to part your lips for a kiss but not for a bite of food, how to end your declarative sentences in a question, how to twitch your hips as you left a room, why you laugh when you feel like screaming, over trays of Bonnie Bell lip smackers and mountains of cooling fries. I heard that being female is as prefab, thoughtless, soulless, and objectively capitalist as a Big Mac. It is not important that it's real. It's only important that it's tasty. And it goes on and on, but that's just a little tidbit of the writing style, which I absolutely love. Like I said, it's quite pretentious. I don't think it will be for everyone, but oh my God, the writing is perfect. Um, another quote. 
You call women the fairer sex. You may repress and deny all you want, but some of us were born with the howling void where our souls should sway. I'm a psychopath, and whatever their reasoning and whatever their diagnosis, the eager psychology and criminal justice students are right to study me. And if they're wrong, I still enjoy their attention, and I'll do what I must to encourage it. So those are just a couple of my favorite tabs so far. But yeah, I'm gonna go see my nephews, but this is so good. Excuse the loud fan sound because it gets smoky in here, but your daily protein pancake porn. Well, not daily. I don't have these every day. I have it if I don't have another protein. I try to just have this serving of protein a day. There she is. Okay, I gotta go because I'm gonna be late, but here is my Jaden outfit. I'm obsessed with these pants. Are they the cutest thing ever or what? Can't wait. Be so much fun. <laughs> tea I had to stop everything I'm doing to show you guys this I want to get close so that it's clear quality but she's not gonna let me angel oh miss owl fox you good honey you are the most precious of them all how could you see that in the morning and not be just you know the happiest person in the world with this view. <laughs> Hi, honey. She wants to make an appearance. She's a little nervous. <laughs> Hi, mama. I don't know where Carly Cat is. Oh, Miss Owl Fox, I know you're so camera shy. I'm so sorry, my dear. Where are you? Okay, I'm seriously obsessed. Oh man, you can't see the color at all. I have to show you in better lighting, not in my Jeep. I love this color. Don't know why this is happening. Okay. Okay, you guys, I do feel bad that you're hearing my laptop processing, but I have to film this now because I'm going out of town tomorrow. And I've just finished this book and I don't want to forget my initial thoughts. Oh, you can see my nails a little bit better here. It's like bubblegum pink. Isn't she precious? So I have finished A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers and it was fabulous. So a couple things to say here to like summarize. It's following a woman, the men she kills, her life story, being a food critic, her time in prison, um, the guys that she's had relationships with, loved, maybe not, um, her best friend. And it's just a very interesting format. There are so many food descriptions in this. In fact, if you take a sample of it and read the very beginning, and we're talking about the Corpse Reviver drink at the beginning, and that was like a little off-putting to get into because I wasn't sure where it was going, that continues on throughout. However, I will say I do not give a damn about any food description in this. Um, I personally do not enjoy reading about food. However, 
it didn't take away from my enjoyment of the book at all. And I actually just kind of read a little bit quickly through those sections. And I think the prose is so, so wonderful. It works so well for me in this book. It's very pretentious, heavily descriptive, over the top. The sentences are beautiful. And that's why I was able to read a book about murder and cannibalism and a food critic and have it be fabulous because of the writing. So if you do not jive with this author's writing, I think it's gonna be a miss for you if you don't like pretentious writing styles. That being said, it was perfect for me. If you don't like reading about food, but you like the writing style, I think you could still enjoy it. I think that it was witty, it was smart, it was a commentary on women, feminism, sexism. Um, there were definitely some portions about eating animals and um, butchering animals in here that I did not care for as a vegan. I don't wanna read about those things in a fiction book like this, um, but it was not to the point where it really took away from my enjoyment. Once again, I just read quickly through those sections, so just be warned that that's in there, as well as definitely some descriptions of killing humans. Um, so I don't even know where to begin with some of the quotes that I love so much, but this book made me laugh out loud several times. Let's see, this section she's talking about how we love cannibalism as a society. If ritual cannibalism is metaphor, then metaphoric cannibals abound. Look at your you, Christ. As Christians sip that wine and let that wafer dissolve on their tongues, these words roll around in their heads. This is my body, this is my blood. Cannibalism is so deeply ingrained in our culture that a good portion of us engage in the sacred act once a week. Turn up your nose at people like me, people who accept as actual what you all comfort yourselves with at linguistic, at linguistic remove, but you're no different. The blood is the life and human history is littered with people who eat people, the pluckiest people in the world. I love this, sen this sentence. It's not even being an excellent writer. The world teams with people who can craft prose as liquid as silk and twice as strong. Cause she's making a lot of puns about writing in this as well. It's a lot about how she doesn't want her life to be boring too. So she's talking about this week where she stayed at home from work and did nothing but lie around, I think in like the same sweats and ate certain food and, um. I'm watching too much Teen Wolf because I literally thought that was wolf eyes. Um, yeah, she says, I look back at that impotent time and I think this is how ordinary people must feel every day. You poor pitiful fools. This quote, the unapologetically guilty woman sleeps soundly at night. There was definitely like, I tabbed this page. I'm not gonna read the whole thing because it's very long, but there was definitely commentary on vegetarians and veganism. And I think that it was just supposed to be poking fun at it, not in like actually an intentionally harmful way. But um. in America, our girlfriends teach us what love, trust, and desire are. They hold our hands as we navigate the scylla of the sex. With them, we are our truest, most essential selves. We don't have to be pretty, but we heap praise upon one another when we are. We don't have to be nice and we forgive each other when we aren't. With our friends, our guard tumbles like acrobats, falls like leaves, and swirls in glittery, dusty eddies. That face we keep up front of everyone else's family, lovers, husbands, or children, we let slide. Our friends see the frailties, the insecurities, the unattractive bits that we have to keep hidden from the rest of the world because, and this is the meat of the matter, it's hard to work. It's hard work to be a woman. It's a full-time job. Our female friends, the close ones, are the mini breaks we take from the totalitarian work it requires to keep up the performance of being female. I just liked that section. Oh, I loved this. We talk about love like it's an involuntary act. We fall into love like a hole, a puddle, an elevator shaft. We never step mindfully into love. Love, we seem to think, requires a loss of control. Love necessitates that vertiginous giving over to gravity. Love wants you to have no choice. Your heart thumps because there's danger and adrenaline in love. You lose yourself in love because you've displaced yourself. So, yes, um, I'm not going to read more than that. But I really enjoyed this book. I'm really glad that I read it. I think a lot of people will get enjoyment out of this. I think it had very uniquely executed commentary on themes that I really enjoy being discussed in like feminist books. I feel like this was quite feminist being this female murder main character. Um, so yeah, I'm super happy I picked this up when I did and I don't want to start next, but the, the, the world, the TBR is open. I've like scrapped my TBR so I can choose anything to read next. I feel like I'm in the mood for fantasy, but I don't really have any fantasy to pick up on my shelf. So 
I suppose we'll see soon. Um, it's nearly 10 p.m. I have to get up at 4. I am so sad. I don't have enough time in life to do anything, but I have to shower. <sighs> I think I already told you guys I got four hours and five hours of sleep. I have a sh I have a cook. I have a clothing haul that I need to do for you guys soon and just so much going on, but I need to go to bed. Yo, I just left my workout, killed it, glute day. And uh, I got compliments from old men at the gym again. They're always like, are you in law enforcement or are you like MMA? And I'm like, no, I used to bodybuild and power lift, but I'm just here doing my thing. Anyways, they were cute. So I um, am on my way home. It's a freaking busy day. I haven't eaten at all. And yeah, I've got, last night was the third night this week. I got five hours of sleep, four and a half, five, something like that. It's just a bad time over here in general. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna go home, shower, get ready. We're gonna leave to go see friends tonight, a couple hours away. But I wanted to tell you guys, I did finish The Wind Up Bird Chronicle by Haruki Murakami. Now, as I said before, I do a spoiler filled reading vlog for my patrons with the buddy read. And that is what the buddy read was this month. So I'm not gonna go into depth here, but I will just say I hated the ending. Like, I think the payoff was zero. I have way, way, way more problems than positives for this book. I think the only good thing is his writing and the atmospheric vibes that you get while reading it. But besides that, it was like garbage to me. Like, there were so many unanswered questions. This is the second time I'm giving, the, I'm giving this rant. There were so many things that didn't make any sense. There were so many threads, I feel, that were started that served absolutely no purpose that the book would have been just fine without having. It just was like a bunch of nonsense to me. And to go like 600 pages and not get any payoff, I was just like, why have we done this? Like you could have done anything else. So I'm sort of bummed because I feel like it did. He has so much potential as an author because of how beautiful I think his writing is and how um, atmospheric it really transports you to what's going on. But yeah, the plot was a complete disaster and just frankly uninteresting. And the payoff was not there and the weird sexualization and sexism towards women and the way that females are thought about, talked about, portrayed. Oh, it was just, I hated every second of that part. So unfortunately, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle for me is an absolute miss. Um, I have yet to decide what audiobook I'm going to start next since this was an audiobook, um, which also I had a lot of issues with the narration. The narrator, the main voice he used was excellent, but then he did different voices for side characters. Some of them were really raspy and like creepy. Some of them were extremely high pitched and cringy. So like half of the other ones I almost couldn't even listen to because they bothered me so much. So just keep that in mind if you're going to go the audio route. Um, but yeah, I have not decided. I have thrown away my TBR for the month of May and I'm just reading whatever I feel like it. Um, so yeah, I might still read Lolita. That might be my next audio. I haven't decided yet. I think I'm going to try it and see if I'm in the mood for it. And if not, I'll give something else a chance. Um, there's a romance, there's like a dark romance thriller type of book I'm actually really interested in. I'll pop the picture in here and I'll let you guys know if I decide to read that one later on. But yeah, since I finished my physical book, which was uh, a Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers, I have decided to go with My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfe. So this is my first book by her, um, which is really exciting because she has quite a few books that I am very interested in reading. So I'm really happy to finally be reading one from her. I, I don't want to do this whole update in the car because I know it's so loud, but I just honestly do not have time. And if I don't do it here, it won't get done. So I do apologize. You're setting on my console. I do apologize about the audio. Um, so yeah, my year of rest and relaxation is a mood, is a vibe. We were talking about it on my Patreon Discord and we're like, you have to suspend your disbelief quite a bit for the doctor, the therapist prescribing these medications in this book is quite preposterous and like quite concerning. It's a bizarre thing to me that they, that Otessa Mashve 
decided to portray a doctor in that way. I don't know. It's just for the sake of the book, right? Suspend your disbelief. So that aside, I love um, the main character's perspective and I love the perspective that her best friend brings to it. I think they're very realistic, relatable perspectives, very different from one another, not caricatures, but very much feel like real life people. I feel like even if they are these archetypes that we see frequently, it's very much a representation of different types of people you would see. So our main character has decided that she wants to take a year to sleep and she thinks if she sleeps, she will become better. So she starts taking this concoction of drugs, um, conning this therapist, like saying she has insomnia, all of these things. She's just effed up all of the time because she's taking so many prescription medications, downers, all she wants to do is sleep. So um, once I get home or to a place where I can, there are some quotes I'll read about um, sleeping and I don't know, just some relatable things that I have read so far that I really appreciate from the book. It's not something that I would want to spend a really long time reading because it's very depressing because our main character is depressed. Um, she's not going through a happy time in her life and I can see why people who aren't sad don't like sad girl lit, but I find it very relatable to past versions of myself, which is a cathartic thing to read. Um, being out of that space now and thinking like, okay, yeah, you've been through something like that because believe me, there was a time when sleep and even still sometimes sleep is the best part of my day because it's peaceful and I'm happy <laughs> and I don't have to deal with anything else. So I feel like a lot of us probably could relate to that. Um, so her best friend keeps coming over and trying to get her to go out and just snap out of it and telling her to stop wasting her life. She's pretty. It also deals with the, she's an orphan. Um, and she did not have loving parents, but she was successful. She went to like top level school. She was rich. She's pretty skinny, blonde. So she like has it all. And I really appreciate, as I said in previous videos, books that deal with a main character who has seemingly the whole package and should be happy, but is not happy for, you know, one reason or another. She also was working at like this art studio and doesn't, didn't want to continue doing that because things just got to be too much where she was constantly sleeping all the time. So yeah, I'm about a third of the way through that. I just started that this morning when I did cardio before work. Um, and yeah, so I'm hoping to finish that early on next week. Hopefully I have a really busy weekend. So probably not this weekend, but yeah, I'm just taking my time with it, enjoying it. And then I might just take a couple days off of my audio book, but I suppose we will see. As I said, I gotta go home, shower, get ready, pack, all of those things. Definitely no more reading time today. And I might try to edit a vlog in the Jeep or in the car on the way there. We'll see. I have not had any more time to read, but we are home now. Friday, because it's Sunday. Friday, we went to like Berrien Springs, St. Joe area, and we got to walk out on the pier at the beach and just did some stuff in that area and then came back for a date night, which I'll show you here on Saturday night. And so it's Sunday morning. I've read like a tiny, tiny bit more of this this morning before I was editing because I was a little hungover or drunk when I woke up still and in pain so I couldn't sleep. So I wanted to read some quotes from this. So just because I was talking about it in the car. Um, so the first one that I marked says, I was, her friend had come over and she says, I was both relieved and irritated when Riva showed up. The way you'd feel when someone interrupted you in the middle of a suicide. Not that what I was doing was suicide. In fact, it was the opposite of suicide. My hibernation was self-preservational. I thought that it was going to save my life. I liked this part just about like being a young person and like doing what you think you're supposed to do in life. And she says, on the weekends, I did what young women in New York like me were supposed to do. At first, I got colonics and facials and highlights, worked out in, at an overpriced gym, lay in the haman there until I went blind and went out at night in shoes that cut my feet and gave me sciatica. I met inter interesting men at the gallery from time to time. I slept around in spurts, going out more than less. Nothing ever panned out in terms of love. Riva often spoke about settling down. That sounded like death to me. I'd rather be alone than anybody's live-in prostitute, I said to Reba. Okay, that one I'm not gonna read on camera. He's taught this like toxic love interest she has says, blondes are distracting. Think of your beauty as an Achilles heel. You're too much on the surface. I don't say that offensively, but it's the truth. It's hard to look past what you look like. Since adolescence, I've vacillated between wanting to look like the spoiled person that I was and the bum that I felt I 
was and should have been if I'd had any courage. I chopped at Bergdorf's and Barney's and high-end vintage boutiques in the East Village. The result was an amazing wardrobe, my main professional asset as a new college graduate. I easily landed the job as a gallery, gallery girl. On and on and on. And then it says, Trevor was right about my Achilles heel. Being pretty only kept me trapped in a world that valued looks above all else. I love that statement so much because, I don't know, that's, I'm not sitting here calling myself pretty, but it is a thing to often feel trapped by that label. Carly, how'd you get in here? Oh, sleep. Nothing else could ever bring me such pleasure, such freedom, the power to feel and move and think and imagine, safe from the miseries of my waking consciousness. I was not narcoleptic. I never fell asleep when I didn't want to. I was more of a somniac, a somnophile. I'd always loved sleeping. It was the one thing my mother and I had enjoyed doing together when I was a child. We got along best when we were asleep. I was finally doing something that really mattered. Sleep felt productive. Something was getting sorted out. I knew in my heart this was perhaps the only thing my heart knew back then, that when I slept enough, I'd be okay. I'd be renewed, reborn. I would be a whole new person. Every one of my cells regenerated enough times that the old cells were distant, foggy memories. My past life would be but a dream and I could start over without regrets, bolstered by the bliss and serenity that I would have accumulated in my year of rest and relaxation. I love this quote. It says, she was talking about keeping her house. She's an orphan um, that she grew up in with her parents. She said, but I think I was holding on to the loss, to the emptiness of the house itself, as though to affirm that it was better to be alone than to be stuck with people who were supposed to love you yet couldn't. I love this sentence. I learned to float on cheap affections gleaned from other people's insecurities. It seemed like everything now was some was somehow linked to getting back what I'd lost. I could picture my selfhood, my past, my psyche like a dump truck filled with trash. Sleep was a hydraulic piston that lifted the bed of the truck up, ready to dump everything out somewhere. But Trevor was stuck in the tailgate, blocking the flow of garbage. I was afraid things would be like that forever. So yeah, I'm only on just, oh, just past page 100 right now, but still really enjoying this. I just wanted to give that update. Um, later on, I'm hoping to go to Target really want to go to the plant store, like the nursery, greenhouse, and I really want to go book shopping. I'm not going to lie. I really, really want to, but I don't know if I will. Sun's coming out a little. It's very, very foggy today. I'm guessing you can probably hear little Carly purring right here, but I did get a chance to get some more reading done this morning before Paul woke up and I've been cleaning and I put a poll on my Instagram because I had two books come in from the library through audio. One was My Brilliant Friend by Elena, shoot, I forget her last name for, uh, can't think of it. Anyways, then the other one is Beautiful World, Where Are You by Sally Rooney. So of course the Sally Rooney is winning. However, I decided to go ahead and listen to the Elena Fuentes. I think that's what it is, My Brilliant Friend instead, because I'm gonna start the show conversations with friends soon and I'm just, not ready to read the last Sally Rooney that is published yet. So I want to wait because then I will have no more Sally Rooney books left to read. So I should check really quick how far I am in My Brilliant Friend. Okay, I just looked and I'm 11% of the way through. It's not a super long book by any means. And it's very interesting. Honestly, like I'm, I'm gripped more than I thought I would be for like sort of the format that it's being told because it's sort of mundane and boring but interesting. I know that makes no sense. Just go with it. We have these two women at the beginning. So one is getting phone calls from this man whose mother has like abandoned him, but he's like fully grown at this point, I'm pretty sure. And he like cannot find his mother and she wants to disappear. She didn't want to take her own life, but she wanted to like wipe herself from everyone and everything she's ever known and he wants to be able to find her so he's contacting this other woman and then after that little part of the current present day timeline we get some information about growing up so it starts in like early childhood where these two women in the present day story are, as girls their friendship forms and the one that is missing now um is extremely intelligent and the other one always feels like second best to her in everything um academics and beauty everything you can think of and so it's sort of this competitive nature and we can't really get a feel of the personality for the one that's super smart yet other than she seems a little bit malicious at times and like does things that are harmful on purpose. Um, so yes, I'm very, very, very curious as to where this is going. I've heard 
glowing like rave reviews for this and then I've also heard people say they were very disappointed and didn't like this book um and I wanted to accept this loan now while while I'm still interested in it because this book just came to my attention this year and I've seen it around on bookstagram everywhere lately so I just placed the hold at the library not that long ago and so I thought it would be the perfect time to mood read and read something that has been on my radar just recently I also um on a whim decided to contact my patrons and we scrapped our June pick which was still life because I'm finally getting a little bit mo of mojo back to read a fantasy book so they were all like go with it girl we will read a fantasy book with you so Paul and I, I think are going to go to the bookstore today and I want to try to find um some fantasy books that I'm really interested in um that are newer so that I can have them sort of choose between two books that I'm really interested in so hopefully I'll be able to put a little clip in of that and if I get I don't know any other books or plants or whatever else we get up to. We've been cleaning and doing a ton of like housework today. Very productive. I wish I wasn't up since 5 a.m., but it is what it is. Make sure all the flowers look so pretty. <laughs> decide what fantasy book to get because everybody is saying the ones I want to read are getting bad reviews but I got volume one of Heartstopper which I've already read they only had volume one because you can't find them anywhere but we're gonna watch it yeah maybe he definitely. will watch it with me I'm definitely gonna watch it <laughs> and then I still have to get the other three and order them um and Paul got me a mini Cade oh we have to name him wait they know about Cade yeah oh okay a mini Cade what did you get Paul at Cade the bookstore Jr. Uh, Lego. <laughs> <laughs>